Hi, this is Andre and uh, welcome back to the This Week in Gaming. This is for the first uh, week of July and we are taking a look at what happened in the last few weeks. So, um, uh, first of all, we had uh, basically the, uh, the Microsoft Activision deal that is still ongoing and I think at this point in time we are looking at at least uh, a year until something is uh, wrapped up there because um, the deal is blocked by several countries and the FTC itself. So. Yeah, it's uh, um, currently uh, still in development. Uh, but what's interesting, in the legal documents um, uh, that have been handed in, in the court cases, there was um, basically a, a little hiccup by Sony because they accidentally revealed the budgets for uh, Horizon, uh, Forbidden West, and um, uh, and also, uh, I think, The Last of Us 2, yeah, exactly. And they were respectively 212 to 220 million, so you know kind of what is there invest and if they actually make some kind of profit of, of it. So yeah, that was a big slip up, but uh, yeah, for, for us of course it's super interesting. Um, the other thing that um, I came across is that Starfield uh, was supposed to be a PlayStation exclusive and Sony tried to buy it outright. So uh, yeah, it's no wonder that Microsoft at some point uh, yeah chimed in and tried uh, to do it themselves. So uh, yeah, this is basically uh, one of the major parts of their acquisition goals now, to basically uh, have uh, this um, not working for Sony, first of all. Yeah, and Sony is of course bringing up the cases again, uh, especially when it comes to Call of Duty, because um, yeah, um, they're still afraid that they get the more buggier version if it still releases on PlayStation. So um, yeah, I don't think this will happen, but uh, yeah, it's, it's interesting what's happening there in, in that case. At the moment, I'm not sure if this is going through at all, um, because um, I still see a market monopoly building up there in that case, and uh, even if Sony has a lot of exclusive games and is yeah, basically uh, <laughs> not happy uh, on any occasion um, uh, of this kind of acquisition deal, um, I, don't, I don't think this, this will happen, uh, at least not in the foreseeable future. Um, what else do we have is um, yeah, a very sad case that uh, the Dalek, the developer of Gollum, they actually seem to close their studio here in Hamburg and um, yeah, they only want to go for uh, publishing deals in the future. I think this is uh, no wonder because uh, yeah, Gollum mm, might have been a very, very big flop overall. It not only reviewed badly and was basically a meme uh, on the internet for uh, several weeks, um, you can tell that basically this, this game destroyed the company now, which is kind of a shame because they have a lot of good games and um, they also have, uh, I think, a sequel to Deponia in development, uh, but that will be developed by another studio and then it will just be published by, um, by uh, what's left of the Dalek. Yeah, um, another uh, uh, very interesting uh, development, um, um, Diablo 4 uh, has become kind of the gold standard in community management uh, at the moment um, because they're busy reacting to, uh, to everyone's concerns, they're patching, uh, they're patching the game uh, on several occasions, um, they released a very big patch that addressed basically all the, uh, let's say, immediate uh, issues that were uh, coming up with the game. So, first of all, they buffed everything, um, they reworked some of the dungeon mechanics uh, and so forth. So, yeah, they're, they're basically uh, doing what is requested of them. They're trying to improve the game. They're communicating very fast and very responsive uh, with, the, with the fans, like uh, at least every other day um, with kind of team chats and uh, Discord settings. So, this is all, this is great stuff. So, um, yeah. In the past, that was always an issue, because it started with Diablo Immortal and um, all the excuses for how the game was building up and then not showing another Diablo and stuff like this. So at the moment, I'm, I'm super surprised by, by Blizzard that uh, basically at least the Diablo team is uh, like basically the, the best <laughs> community um, representation. Um, and um, yeah, uh, basically giving feedback to the community. This is this is that's is just great how they're handling all of this. Um, yeah, um, I'm I'm a great fan of uh, AI art, and this is um, kind of important for the next topic I want to talk about. This is a game called Firmament. Um, this is a sequel to uh, to Mist and, and uh, Rim. Maybe some of you know that that were basically PC classics back in the day. They were kind of render screen puzzle games and they had a very surreal atmosphere. 
And now they brought out a new game called Ferrament, and a lot of the assets are AI generated. The same is true for um, a few other games, but none of them have done it in such a very particular way now. So um, you can see that this is working, um, especially for a game like Ferrament, which has also this kind of very surreal atmosphere, like the previous games. And it is also working for um, the, um, the starting credits of, um, the, I think, uh, Secret Invasion, that's what it's called, the new Marvel series um, on, on Disney+, Plus, where they also have basically uh, the beginning of the movie completely rendered by AI art. And uh, this is a very good fit because the topic of the uh, series uh, is about shape-shifting and mystery and uh, gov uh, government conspiracy. So yeah, this is, this is quite, uh, quite a, a good use case for that. Um, I think a lot of people are still concerned about AI art, especially when it comes to uh, copyright and basically uh, stealing jobs from uh, um, artists and developers and narrative designers. But I don't think that's the case. Um, I think in the future this will be just another tool because you still have to train the AI basically by yourself. And uh, you also have to script it. And uh, of course, when it comes to copyright, you have to build up a library of your own. You have to see um, that you are only using your image material and um, how um, it is actually applied in, in the game and what is sent out to the public. So, um, yeah, the, the AI can't just work on, on its own. And, yeah, it will just become a, another tool, um, in my opinion. Um, yeah, uh, we also had the Steam Next Fest. Um, they had a lot of cool demos. Um, my favorite was uh, Lunar Abyss. That's, uh, that's a shooter uh, in a yeah, very dark, horrific future. Um, and it reminded me of Metroid Prime, uh, mixed with a bit of Returnal. So you have this kind of bullet hell uh, enemies, um, first-person shooter. Um, and uh, yeah, this is basically a, a good reference to, to Returnal, where there you can even see some of the patterns that were also used in that game. And uh, yeah, it, it feels very much overall like Metroid Prime, because of course you have been... Uh, you have this kind of uh, back and forth walking in the game. Um, uh, you also have a lock on uh, to the enemies, which is kind of rare in uh, 3D shooters. Uh, so you're not just basically uh, uh, going down for iron sights, but uh, yeah, you can actually lock on to the enemies. Uh, it has this kind of futuristic, uh, dire, dark atmosphere. So yeah, there's definitely a recommendation. It's called Lunar Abyss. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll try to release in the in the YouTube version to um, to give you a link to the Steam store page, uh, and it's also very well reviewed so far. Um, yeah, in other news, um, also um, X Defiant, uh, the new multiplayer shooter from Ubisoft, they had a um, closed beta now, and what was interesting was um, that for this closed beta, there were already cheats and bots created um, by by uh, by some developers out there. And uh, yeah, you can see there's basically a hard interest in, in this in this game, because uh, yeah, they actually uh, creating cheats for it because uh, before it is even released. So um, yeah, maybe um, this kind of breaks the streak of uh, multiplayer games that are all failures by Ubisoft in the, uh, from the last few years, like uh, Hyperspace and all of these games. And um, yeah, maybe Extra Find uh, could become a hit for them. Who knows? It seems to be very well received now from the closed beta uh, testers. And yeah, you can see that um, at the moment where someone is creating cheats for your games, uh, that there might be some interest to it. So yeah, a very, very interesting uh, case. And um, two very recent things that uh, happened um, in the last few days is that uh, first of all, uh, Ubisoft, uh, Ubisoft also slipped um, a new release, uh, or better to say a game that is currently in development. And it is a remake of Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, which is kind of ironic uh, because they are still developing Skull and Bones, which is kind of a spin-off of uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag. So yeah, we have to see uh, how much effort they're actually putting into the uh, Black Flag remake now. This is a very well-beloved game. And uh, I can see this uh, yeah, as, a, as a nice, nice remake if they are going basically just with the Val Valhalla uh, engine from the last Assassin's Creed. So, um, yeah, this is, uh, this is very good news. And, uh, but they still seem to be in, let's say, um, in the pre-production stage with uh, first R&D on this game. So, uh, yeah, it's, it might take a while before it comes out. 
but it's uh, good to know that uh, yeah, uh, one of the best Assassin's Creed games ever uh, gets a proper remake. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's especially um, when you look at Skull and Bones, which at the moment seems to be a very mediocre and uh, confusingly strange title, uh, because nobody knows exactly what um, the topic of the game is, or whether how it will play in total, what is the end game, why this game exists at all. And um, yeah, uh, so far they had a few betas uh, that were very disappointing for them. So um, yeah, we have to see if Scarlet Bones even make sense or if they just uh, even cancel it in the next few months when they're doing the remake uh, uh, for Assassin's Creed 4. Who knows? And uh, yeah, uh, one thing that is great for me is in the Annapurna showcase that we had a few days ago, that's an uh, indie focus publisher. Um, they announced that they are now developing their first game on their own, and that will be a Blade Runner game. There's a very small trailer for it uh, uh, on the internet, you can just Google it. It's called Blade Runner 2033 Labyrinth. Nobody knows exactly what it is. It's at the moment a, um, yeah, a mix of very artsy cutscenes and some possible gameplay elements. It's kind of hard to say. I, I expect that it will be let's say, something like an uh, adventure game, um, like a classic point and click, but with more modern controls. And uh, yeah, you're playing, I, I think, as an uh, LAPD agent. So um, yeah, we have to see. Um, it's, it's great uh, that they are not abandoning this IP. There was a fantastic Blade Runner game like decades ago on the PC, uh, which was even a four or five disc release with beautiful rendered backgrounds, kind of like the Resident Evil games, but with point-and-click elements. So, um, yeah, uh, definitely take a look at that. Uh, very promising, and, um, yeah, I'm totally happy about it, that uh, Blade Runner is finally getting some uh, uh, game uh, treatment. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, something that should have happened way, way earlier. <laughs> and, um, yeah, one thing for, um, let's say, uh, the... Uh, free games this month, you should definitely take a look at um, the free games that come with the uh, PlayStation Plus Premium subscription. Yeah, you have um, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, Shredder's Revenge, which is a fantastic uh, 2D side-scroller from last year. You have Rogue Legacy 2, that's the sequel to um, uh, the first Rogue, Rogue Legacy, which has kind of a very cool heritage um, and uh, legacy. Uh, gameplay mechanic where basically when your character dies in this rogue game um, you are playing basically as um, as the children and uh, you are taking some of the uh, previous abilities that you have unlocked with basically the parent character and bring that to your, no, uh, to your new uh, uh, playthrough so uh, a super cool game and um, of course the biggest one that is also um, in the subscription is uh, Inscription which is kind of a let's say very meta uh, uh, trading card game that uh, in the middle of um, uh, the game turns into something more, more like a horror game and uh, there's definitely some surprises. It's not just uh, um, some kind of uh, card game but it is uh, also a horror adventure uh, on the side. So uh, this is definitely a game that you should take a look at. And uh, yeah, the Callisto uh, uh, Protocol uh, DLC release. I haven't played it so far. Um, a lot of people are not happy with it. Uh, I think there's one new uh, enemy race, uh, basically the um, um, the robots um, that are now merged with the uh, with kind of this this kind of uh, uh, zombie genetics. So that's quite interesting. There's a new weapon, and I very very much like this game, uh, unlike other people, because the graphics are fantastic and it felt very physical. So I definitely will take a look at the DLC uh, in the next few days. Um, yeah, and um, uh, just as a next uh, recommendation, there's also a game called Trabang 2, and um, this is a shooter. At the moment, it's PC exclusive. And it's uh, very similar to Fear. Um, maybe you can recall this series from, I think, around about the 2000s to 2010s. There were uh, three games of it. Fantastic game. And uh, Trepang uh, 2 seems to go in the same direction. So it has a bit of horror elements and it has uh, absolutely fantastic gun handling. So yeah, uh, definitely take a look at that as well. Um, yeah, so um, uh, thanks for listening. So this is basically the, the gaming showcase for the uh, beginning of July. 
And uh, yeah, as previously stated, I try to do this now uh, basically every other week. So yeah, well, let, let's see um, um, what comes out this month and uh, what we can talk about. Maybe some things will happen then uh, on the side again with the companies, you have to see the, you never know. Um, yeah. And uh, I'm kind of excited for July uh, because there will be the sequel to Remnant. Um, and that looked absolutely stunning. This is kind of a, um, it was pretty much a co-op uh, third-person shooter with some light, um, let's say, live service uh, games uh, vibes. Uh, it also had kind of the soul mechanics and everything. So, yeah, um, definitely looking forward to that. Uh, maybe I even do a review of it as soon as it comes out. Um, yeah, then um, thanks for listening again and have a nice day. Bye.